Gabe, you know black folks, and we get right down to business immediately on uh, looking at, and we'll take to the border, and I got two shots, and I'll show you what the shots are, because I'll back out in a second, but first off, we'll get the magnetical <coughs> attraction of this object, which is basically not really known to us too much, and it's up behind our back door. Remember, back door, back door, back door, okay? Back door of Earth and Mercury here, okay? Now I'm going to give you a zoom-in shot here to the right, and what you're looking at is if, when you see my line up the border, the magnetical line that you're going to see in the right-hand shot is that object there connected to this object here, okay? And basically, since you see a magnetic line, it should be in our solar system. Remember Voyager 1 and NASA is talking about Voyager 1 again. Okay, and remember, no matter what, we've got this bright object that's up by Saturn. I'll take you to some footage where you can see Saturn, and Saturn is not looking to... Saturn is not rolling to the, I mean, it's not orbiting the sun uh, clockwise. What it, what it will be when I take you to that footage, now this is the same, uh, we've got 921 for a time, it doesn't matter too much, it, about the, 2209, actually it's the exact same time. Okay, now what this is, is a zoom in shot in the black and white to the right, and it's magnetical, and you can see a lot more magnetical and everything like that, okay? The sun and everything's off to the right. Uh, I'm not sure what we have down there low. Uh, that could be a CME from the sun. It doesn't really matter at this point in time. That's not what we're really looking at. What I'm going to do is take you up and you're going to see that this is magnetically connected to this. Okay? And basically, magnetical, I won't be able to move all the way over to the side. Okay, I can get it over here on the right hand side and as you can see, bam, magnetical, okay? Magnetical matches up this object and this object. Now I'm going to show you actual factual that we don't know that those two objects because remember, Mercury's out in front of Earth, okay? That is Mercury, i.e. I'll point to Mercury over here, that is Mercury. Remember, it's the same size as the moon, remember, so you can see this difference too here. <clears throat> now, it looks bigger because it's closer to the camera right now, okay? Because Mercury is closer to the camera in the angle, what you're looking at on these shots. And no matter what, you know Saturn is right there and it's even marked, okay? That's Saturn, and then that's our bright object that we see that's flashing up there. I'm not even gonna, I don't even think I'll have time for that footage in this dialogue. And as you can see there, we have that object again, and then I'll bring the slider over and we'll get up the line up, and then you get the magnetical of the factual that you're looking at. This object here, that object there, and I'll match them up in this shot over here to the right, which is the same stamp, same time. And I gotta basically show it to you like this by giving you that borderline there, that those are the same two objects. Boom, boom. Just basically this shot here is zoomed in on this shot over here, okay? So Saturn and our bright object, okay? And then remember that's Earth and Mercury right there, and that's Mercury there, okay? Earth is the closer, actually not the closest object, it's the farther away object, but it's bigger. Okay, and then you get it there. Earth is marked, okay, and then that's Mercury. And Mercury is actually closer to you right now in this shot, but Mercury is the same size as the moon. Remember that. Okay, so these objects, no matter what, remember, this is a zoomed in shot over here to the right. Okay, that's the zoomed in shot. Okay, this is zoomed in, so no matter what, that and that are there, okay? That and that. Or actually, I'm off a little bit because basically when you line it up, I think it ends up being that. Uh, I can take it to the border here in a smaller shot. I have to take it all the way to the right, and you end up seeing what lines up. So basically, it's actually that object right there, okay? Now I'll take you to the footage because it's directly in line like when I showed you here, when I had it zoomed in, it's directly in line, that's that object there, okay? So, this no matter what is up back there, and Saturn's up back there, but no matter what, this stuff, i.e., this stuff that they're zooming in on, okay, that and that, I'll take it back up to 900, go up 999 real fast, no matter what, NASA's looking at it, because no matter what, it's in our solar system, and it's actually factually there, and we don't have a names for them, okay? Because that is magnetically tied down to that, 
And as I take this over again right here, we don't have names for those objects. Now I'm going to take you to some. Now you don't see the sun because it's not in the drawing because it's in the center of the well. Now they're shooting. They don't shoot the sun. The sun's in the middle right there the finger's at, okay? Vest is not in these shots that I'm going to show you. Because basically I'll go to the, this JPL here and basically I can zoom, zoom all the way out. You will see that there's nothing up behind Saturn. And as I come in, you see Earth and Mercury, and then we come in and all the way in on the sun. Okay, the sun is the red dot. So, actual factual, there's nothing known to man that we have listed because everything we've seen before we had this modern technology would be a luminosity that we'd be able to see it. Okay, meatballs, gaseous objects, and stuff like that in the darkness of space block these objects that we're seeing now on satellite telescopes. Okay, so there's everything that we know is Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus. Okay, and factual that there's nothing we know we know that we got that object out by Saturn right there okay we know we got that out by Saturn and in the future I'll probably keep hammering this home because we're in these positions right now where Neptune Uranus and everything is nothing's out our back door that we know of you see if we go all the way into Earth right there and if I go all the way out you know that the only Saturn's out there and there's also that bright object that's out there that we're seeing in the deal and there's nothing out behind Earth <clears throat> now factually we can take and go to the Sechi shots. Now, when you're watching this on B and at whatever date, I got the 13th here. When you're watching, I'm going to hit play. Now, what happens on the 13th is when Saturn first gets drawn in, because what happens is core 2B follows Mercury, okay? Because it has to stay in its Y, because Mercury goes around the sun, and Earth is over here with Mercury, and we this B will follow somewhat whatever NASA's got for a orbit speed to stay in a perfect Y, with Sechi A, which is on the other side, okay? So I don't have a map of that uh, sitting up here right now at this moment, but no matter what, we have this object also down on B low in this shot, okay? And that's not Mercury because already in B, you can go to footage on B, and Mercury's already went around the sun, which the sun is here, and Mercury just went like this, and bye-bye this way. Because we will line up with... Uh, I'll take you to, uh, here's the earthquakes, I'll show you the earthquakes real fast, the, the actual factor that we did have picked up, and we picked up, not that time there, we actually picked up on the 24 hour period that I said was going to happen, because we're going to go to another page here, as I scroll down through this, and you can follow this, and basically it just refreshed, so that's good, and we'll go down and you'll see the magnitude, remember the magnitude is in this line here, and I'll hit the second page. And you'll see what happened when we started getting a 6.1. Now remember, we had a couple days there we didn't have a 6.1 because of the lull of the large object that came by. It was 3.8 kilometers big. And then we ended up getting this over at Panadu region. And also, I believe that there was this action here at Curl Islands. Okay, 6.2, 6.0. So remember, we had that little bit of a calm, and it pretty much works all two days ahead of time and two days after a, a, a large or even sometimes a small object that will come by fast or slow and it'll strum the magnetic belts of what's out in space on the orbital in space. So remember that when that shot is shooting you don't get the sun which is in the center of the well and that's not vested that we're seeing up here on all these Sechi shots that I'm going to show you. Okay, so remember we have these objects up there Okay, no matter what, you can see that object there and that object there. And this is the zoom in because when I move to the left, it's because this is Earth and that's Mercury. And we move over here and no matter what, you got Saturn and our, our object that I've been showing up in all the videos that I've made this weekend. So uh, factually, we have this object here, which is not Mercury or anything we know of. Okay, And it's not Saturn. Okay, Either is this. This is not Saturn there either. And we've been seeing these move clockwise around the sun no matter what okay those are moving clockwise around the sun and they have magnetical to them and that's not mercury and it's not anything that I've been showing you on all the players now we got to remember what's going on in with ice on and Saturn and Earth will be in a superior conjunction which means that the idea of Saturn will be on the opposite side of the sun which the sun is right there being on the totally opposite side direction straight in line on November the 9th okay 
November the 9th, and I'll give you the data on that real fast, you see. So what's interesting is we have ice on coming around the sun on the 11th there. I back up a couple days, we'll go to the 9th, okay? And common ice on's up there, okay? And then common ice on will keep coming into the sun, as you see there, okay? And then I'll take it back to the 9th, get it on the 9th. And then that's when Earth is going to be directly in line. What it is, is I'm trying to emphasize everything's pretty damn safe. We're, we're always a rabbit hiding out in a hole. Now you got Saturn there, remember, and we've got that object that's bright that's up by the sun, i.e. if I take you back to, uh, remember, there's nothing out our back door, only Saturn's out our back door. Invested with the angle you cannot see, factual. And then you've got Saturn and this bright object up there that's out back there, okay? Currently. Now remember, I'm showing you November 9th. I'm not showing you, I can show you here on the March 24th, you see, and then I can zoom out and so forth. And then you got Earth. See, the only things out there is Saturn, okay? And the only things out there with Saturn is that bright object that they're, sh that they're showing you. And I can get back to that by going here, okay? Saturn and that bright object. That's Saturn right there. And that's that damn bright object that's up there, okay? Now, what I'm concerned is with the bright object and with ice on, which is this, because we know that it's the brightest doggone uh, comet that we're going to have come in. Okay, when it's coming in, ice on's coming in, and it's going to be around the sun, we're going to be watching this object up by, that's up by Saturn right now because it's coming this way, but remember, it's going high also. It's going high. So what's going to be interesting in the future, okay, ISON's going to circle around, at least JPL believes and knows that it figures that it's going to come around. But what they've been seeing with trajectory, just like a rocket trajectory, that it's going to go around the sun, okay? It's coming from that direction up there by, remember, this is on November 9th on the conjunction, and I'm going to show you the factual that you know, it, you're seeing it right here too, that basically Saturn lines up conjunction with the Sun and straight across to Earth in this shot, okay? Earth there, Sun's in the middle where Ison's going to go around. So what's going to be interesting is, and I have actual factual that someone made a video today, and asteroid belts, remember, and it's not, they don't, they're asteroid fields. There's an inner asteroid field that we know of for damn sure and an outer asteroid field. Now, outer asteroid field is way out by, let me show you that. Now, the superior conjunction, which is straight across from, that means that Saturn and Earth will be on, and it's actually November 6th, so I had to, I'd had i have to back the JPL up a little bit. So, basically, I'll do that real fast, and I have it the right one here, so I'll go even back to the 6th, okay? So, that's when, no matter what, that Earth and Saturn will be in that conjunction there. So, the idea that that object that we're seeing that's bright, is going to be coming around at about the same time because it's coming this way that we don't that no one's really talking about it and it's up and it's bright up by Saturn. Back up the video and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now Ison we know about it's big and bright and if you watch all the videos I made this weekend, I want to show you those asteroid belt areas. Okay, they're belt areas of asteroid. We have an inner one and we have an outer one. Okay, so that's that conjunction that's going to be on the sixth. It's in superior because basically we're all the way on the other side of the sun, directly in alignment with Saturn. Okay, and then you have ice on, which will be coming around the sun, but it won't be, it'll be way, it'll be, we can just hit forward here real fast, and it's going to be, November 29th is when ice on is going to do some kind of static electrical melting or whatever, and it's still going to be, that's a, still a tremendous distance, that's like, oh, uh, I remember the only thing that's going to hit anything possibly will be this Mars object, okay, October 19th of 2014. Otherwise, everything else is pretty damn safe. It's just ice on. We might end up with some extra sunlight somewhere on Earth, maybe 24-7 sunlight all the way around Earth. It might be so doggone bright. We won't know. We've got to keep on seeing ice on is coming, and it's very bright. Okay, this is what's going to more than likely factually hit the Mars. Okay? So, and there was an East Coast asteroid. Okay, the smaller they are, the brighter they are, and then that's what this was, and there will also be some footage here from a car lot, too. It only lasted about eight seconds or something like that. I think I got a distance from Fireball. Here's the footage from the parking lot. And back this up a little bit. Actually, there's some more footage, too, so... So, more videos to come.